then you'll be able to get a good fee for whatever it is. So uh, don't, don't worry too much. Uh, that's uh, the, everybody's. Uh, somebody's interested in everything. And anything you can be interested in, you'll find others. But it's absolutely stupid to spend your time doing things you don't like. Okay, so I skipped the boring prep phase for you guys because one, it's relatively boring. Two, uh, I'm absolutely terrible at painting and patience and doing things the right way and all of that. So it definitely wouldn't have helped you at all. It probably would have just hurt you if you like looked at what I did and tried to replicate it because it's terrible. But my girlfriend Chrissy came over. She's breathing because it's very uh, paint fumey in here. Uh, and she helped me mask everything off and whatever. And I was just gonna primer all this stuff tonight and paint it tomorrow, but we're on a roll and it's going a lot faster with two people. And she's actually better at painting than I am, which doesn't really say much, but <laughs> uh, yeah. So we're gonna paint the bay, uh, paint the cage, at least get a couple coats on it. Probably won't do clear coat tonight, but uh, it's going really well. It really is. Um, I'm not too worried again about getting paint in these areas and stuff because it's all gonna get covered with carpet. So not a big deal, not going too crazy. The car is gonna get wrapped or painted, like none of it matters. But yeah, I'm really happy. Thanks to Chrissy for being an awesome girlfriend. I try, I try. It's glitching, but you're good. Like for real though, we were, we were hustling. We didn't even hardly talk to each other. We were just jamming this out. So uh, yeah, I think the primer is dried in the base. So we're gonna skip, start there next while this primer finishes drying. I did that on purpose. Uh huh. Yeah, okay. So I totally thought this color was gonna just be a glossy gray. I didn't realize it was gonna be like this metallic, but I like it. I honestly like it. Um, everything in the engine bay is definitely gonna really contrast with this. So I'm good with it. I actually like it. So we're gonna let it ride. That was coat one. Um, so while this is drying, we're gonna let this ventilate for a minute so I don't piss my roommate off. And then we're gonna move on to uh, Doing the cage, which I don't know if I told you guys, I might have said it in the beginning of this video. Copper is the color we're doing. It's kind of tough because you got to get like all around on all sides, and it's like so easy to like miss a whole section and like getting on the backside of this bar, like almost impossible. So we'll see how we do. I don't know. Check it out. Before you guys get on your keyboards and start hammering about how we're terrible painters, we already know. It's okay. It looks sick. We gotta do another coat. Um, we need to do another coat in the engine bay. And then uh, clear coat tomorrow. All right, coat number two done on both the engine bay and the cage. I have this glitter clear that I was going to use, but now I'm thinking with the color of the bay, I don't know that it's a good idea. So, I don't know. I've, I've sprayed a test spot here. I'm going to clear that once it dries and, and see. But, really happy with the color. I still don't know what exterior color I'm going to go with, but it looks sick. So, uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow when we do the clear. All right, so I had to go do like a third coat. We did a second coat last night. I had to kind of do a third touch-up coat. 
uh, because there's just random spots we missed, like right in here in this arch. You couldn't see it last night in the dark um, because the light's only shining from the top. So there was like some spots like that. Uh, so I think I got everything. I'm sure I missed something, but it's a cage. It's gonna get scratched up anyway, and it looks fine. It's like a glittery kind of sparkly um, clear coat, and my plan was to use that with the red, but now that it's the like metallic is your gray i almost don't even want to use it but i did do it on a test piece and it looked pretty decent um it's not that dramatic it's like you know there's like color a little bit when light hits it so i think i'm just gonna go ahead and run it just send it uh you know it can't look that much worse i just hope it doesn't look uh like childish like because it looks classy the way it is now i don't want to like yeah i don't know i'm sure it'll look fine maybe i'll be like yeah, this is amazing who knows but i also want to paint my brake booster which is in the throw it down there i'll deal with it later ben um what else uh the wiper motor like the black part of the wiper motor and i think i'm gonna redo these valve covers in wrinkled black we might not get to that today but they're already pretty trash uh, i think wrinkled black will hold up better and it'll look better in here than like red with red with red so I think that's gonna be the plan for today. Uh, first off, we're gonna get a coat of clear on this just to uh, get that process rolling along. We were gonna be clearing this too and then do the booster, but we screwed up and now we gotta wait for this to dry again. This is swell guy. Alright, so while we're waiting on that clear to dry, we're going to go ahead and pop this, dang it, dang it. I'm not getting that. We're going to go ahead and pop the master cylinder off the booster. That way we can paint the booster. I think it'll really look cool in there, copper. That silver and copper like combo just looks, I feel like it looks really good, I like it. So. Yeah, that's what we're doing. officially done uh clear coat everything we definitely ran the hell out of it over there uh of course on the driver's eight color bar the one i'm going to see the most but again you guys know my 75 25 rule uh looks good enough for me so i'm pretty happy with it I, again i like the color i think this will be okay with any exterior color and the engine bay color i really like even though i totally didn't anticipate this uh if you guys are interested in this color it is this, whatever this is, aluminum 7125 or something? 7515, 7515 aluminum. Uh, definitely not a bad color. Uh, also, something to mention that I almost totally forgot about, we have new shirts. Finally, we've been working really hard uh, with the guys at Strange Planet, well, guys and gals, uh, with some new designs. The one I really wanted to do that I've been, we've been working on for a while, trying to figure out how to make it just right. Basically, it's that seat time is more important than mods. You can have the best built car you want, but if you never drive it and you never get that seat time, it doesn't matter. And obviously that's like the whole thing I try to promote here, I guess. I don't know if you guys know that, but I see a lot of people go down the path of like building this crazy car they can't afford to drive and don't drive and getting out of it entirely when they could just be driving and having fun and getting better. You're never gonna get better if you don't drive, so. Anyway, I really like that one. It kind of means something special to me. And then this one, this is the Miata one. We haven't done a Miata shirt yet. Uh, so don't get me wrong. I love turbos guys. I really do. I promise. I just it's funny because it's like every car that I've gotten without a turbo has seemed to be the most reliable for me knock on wood. Uh, you know, I've had a lot of cars. I've had a lot of drift cars. I've had a lot almost I've had all turbo drift cars until like this point that was the first non turbo drift car I've ever owned. Um, and that kind of started my like reliability train. The Z has been really good. The Miata blew up a bunch of times. Granted, you can have a completely reliable turbo drift car. We know 1Js with turbos are stout, but you know, turbos add complication. There's more things that can go wrong. So no turbos, no problems. I, I don't know. I thought it was funny. 
I thought it was pretty clever for the Miata since we're doing an LS in it and there are a lot of LS haters. So that is the other shirt. The, the Miata drawing with the engine out is from when we one of the times we pulled the motor out and it's done by a guy named Gio and he does really cool illustrations. He, he does all sorts of cool stuff like he draws you know cars and whatnot but he also draws uh, really funny memes and stuff. So it's super clever, great Instagram page to follow. Uh, definitely check it out below. Uh, amazing artist. I really appreciate him drawing that up for me. Oh uh, yeah, I mean that's pretty much it for this video. Next step will be to get everything back in the engine bay that needs to go in or can go in before the motor goes in. We have a few things to tidy up on the motor itself, like this uh, crank pin kit. I'm gonna go ahead and do that just because. And there's a few more things I need to do. Uh, headers are known as the ceramic coater, so we need to get those back, get gaskets, put those on. I've got the bolts coming in already. I've got ARP bolts for the flywheel. While we have it off to do the speed bleeder, so there's just a handful of like small quick things we need to do uh, and then the motor's ready to go back in the car. The problem is I have like very minimal time over the next couple weeks like I'm going to be leaving Thursday for FD Atlanta and then I'm going to get back from there Sunday and then work Monday to Wednesday and then be leaving Thursday or Friday for Texas. Uh, so I have only a few afternoons after work so my goal is to get the motor ready and everything else ready within that time the bay complete and then hopefully Two weeks from now, we can, two weekends from now, we can put the motor back in. And uh, I'm, I'm really excited to have the motor back in the car. So, long winded outro, as always. Thank you guys for watching and for subscribing. I will see you next time. Goodbye.